Something I would like to point out before we get into this video is that due to the lack of information regarding Syndrolic's battle with Vader, I will be including elements from both the Revenge of the Sith novel and the Revenge of the Sith video game into account, as I feel they both paint an accurate description of this battle. With that said, let's get started. Born to Morgan and Patricia Katarn on the planet Solist, Kyle Katarn was raised as a farmer on his home planet. After enrolling in the Imperial Academy, Kyle Katarn rose to the rank of officer and served the Empire proudly. However, after a betrayal by the Empire and the death of his father, Kyle Katarn became a a mercenary working for the rebellion, with Jan Ors by his side. Kyle eventually learned that the person responsible for his father's death was the Dark Jedi, Jarek, who was intent on finding the location of the Valley of the Jedi. After unlocking his Force potential with the help of the spirit of Jedi Master Q. Ron, Kyle Katarn fought his way through Jarek's forces and eventually confronted him at the valley. Kyle defeated Jarek and freed the souls trapped in the valley. However, that was not the end of Kyle's adventures, as not long after, the Dark Jedi Dasan emerged, forcing Kyle into an intense campaign to save the Jedi Academy from Dasan's Dark Jedi Army. Dasan was defeated and Kyle Katarn took up a full role in Luke Skywalker's new Jedi Order. Over the course of his career, Kyle trained many students, the most famous of which was Jaden Kor, who went on to become the hero of the Ragnos Crisis. Kyle was eventually promoted to the rank of Battlemaster of the Order due to his amazing dueling skills. Kyle was also given a seat on the Jedi High Council and was regarded by his fellow masters as one of the best in the Order. Kyle Katarn is remembered for his staunch determination and exponential dueling skills. Born on the planet Lavasar, Syndrolic was taken to the Jedi Temple at a young age. Being trained in the ways of the lightsaber by none other than Yoda himself, Drolig quickly rose to prominence in the Order as a duelist. After being granted the rank of Jedi Master, Syndrolic became the Battlemaster and head lightsaber instructor of the Order. A stern and demanding teacher, Drolig had a hand in training most of the Jedi Order's apprentices in lightsaber dueling, some of which were Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker themselves. During the outbreak of the Clone Wars, Drolig mainly operated at the temple, training young Jedi to fight in the war, and even taking command of the Jedi Temple's Jedi Guards. During the attack of the Jedi Temple during the Great Jedi Purge, Sin Drolig attempted to get his students to safety before being confronted by the new Sith apprentice, Darth Vader. Knowing, knowing what would become of his students if he abandoned them, Syndrolic and his top students bravely attempted to put Vader's rampage to an end. Unfortunately, it was not to be, as Vader cut down the Battlemaster along with his students after a brief engagement. Syndrolic's body was eventually found by the survived Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, as well with his battle with Vader via holo recording. Syndrolic is remembered for his incredible lightsaber dueling skills and his stern teachings. First, we will compare them physically. Kal Katarn is a 67-year-old human male and is in extremely good shape for a man of his years. No small thanks, I'm sure, to his Imperial soldier training. His reflexes and senses are still well honed and his mental stability is still in check. With that said though, he is still quite old and more than likely past his physical prime. Syndralk is a human male roughly in his mid to late 60s and is still in excellent shape for his age. During his battle with Anakin, he demonstrated great flexibility and speed, indicating well hoed strength training. However, he is still quite old and well past his physical prime. Although both individuals have similar physical stats, I would have to give Syndralic the edge in terms of physical ability, as he demonstrates more flexibility and precision in his moves. However, I will say it is only a slight edge, as Kyle Katarn is a total powerhouse who could take a lot of punishment though admittedly with a lack of grace. Now we will compare them as martial artists and lightsaber duelists. Kyle Katarn was one of the most skilled swordsmen of his day, and had many years practicing and refining his lightsaber styles. Kyle is so skilled that it is rumored that Mara Jade Skywalker herself had never wished to be his enemy for fear of death. Kyle's preferred styles are Form 1, Shi Cho, Form 4, Ataru, and Form 5, Xi'an slash the jump so. Form 1 is all about letting the flow of battle work with you. It is very random and spontaneous, attacking at different points at different times. While this style is terrible against single opponents, it is great against large groups, which explains Kyle's ability to deal with hordes of reborn and stormtroopers so well. Form 4, Ataru, is the most physically demanding of all lightsaber styles, utilizing a lot of jumps and flips, basically charging at your enemy and overwhelming them with fierce blade work. Form 5, Xi'an slash Dejump So is very powerful and geared for attack. It utilizes a lot of powerful sweeps with the sole intent of beating your enemy. It is great against single opponents. Basically put, Kyle Katarn is a one-man army, able to deal swift ends to large groups as well as one-on-one -on -one opponents. Syndralig was one of the greatest lightsaber instructors of his day, and had a hand in training a large amount of the Order's greatest warriors. It was even said that even Grievous, with his wide variety of programmed saber styles, would be no match 
match for Drawlig, though I consider this a big exaggeration. Sin Drawlig had been said to have skills in almost every single lightsaber form. However, his preferred forms were Form 2 Makashi and Form 6 Naiman. Form 2 Makashi is geared towards lightsaber dueling and is very elegant and precise. Form 6 Naiman is basically the non-duelist's dueling style, if that makes any sense. This style is very relaxed and basic. It takes bits and pieces from all lightsaber styles, but the issue with that is since it only takes parts from each style, it only gives the practitioner just enough to get by. However, Syndrolog's reputation has often seemed to outstretch his actual abilities. Since he uses a style that takes bits from all, even if he had some skill in all seven styles, he has an obvious weakness. Drolog is so weighted down with styles that he hasn't taken each one to its absolute fullest. Even considering his reputation as a duelist, he is strictly a teacher and not a warrior. This is no more evident since he was defeated by a young Form 5 specialist. He's a jack of all trades, master of few, and despite all his renown as a duelist, he's no Mace Windu, no Obi-Wan, and certainly no Yoda. With all that said, even with Drolg's skills as a swordsman, I would have to give Kyle Katarn the edge in terms of a lightsaber duelist, as although he doesn't know as many styles, he's still a greater master of the ones he does have. Basically put, it's better to be really good at a few than know a lot. Now we compare their force abilities. Cal Katarn is without a doubt one of the most powerful force users in the new Jedi Order. So much so that Jedi Masters Corrin Horn and Kip Durin have regarded him with the utmost respect. And Darth Kytus even considered him a viable threat. Cal Katarn himself has a large variety of both dark and light side abilities at his disposal. Simply put, his force pushes and shoves were extremely powerful as he has been shown to throw back entire squads of troops. He has skills with force speed, force shield, and is well versed in the Jedi mind trick. Due to Kyle's philosophy of Both the light and dark sides will be open to you. Remember, abilities are not inherently good or evil. It's how you use them. Kyle also has a variety of dark side abilities at his command. He is highly advanced in force lightning and has been shown to generate lightning so powerful he could send entire people hurtling through the air. He is also very skilled with the force choke ability, being able to grapple an entire person with ease. Syndralog on the other hand has more basic abilities at his disposal. He has been shown to generate powerful force pushes as he demonstrated with his battle with Vader. He is also very skilled with force speed as he frequently chains it into his lightsaber fighting. Drolog has also demonstrated an understanding of force shield, though the exact extent of which is unknown. Overall. Syndrolog's force abilities are incredibly basic, signifying that he spends most of his time developing his lightsaber skills and nothing else. Not a good move set for a Jedi Master of his alleged renown, is it? I don't think it's much of a surprise who's getting the edge here. Cal Katarn has a much wider array of force abilities to draw on, including skills from both sides of the force, while Drawlog only has basic light side abilities to fall back on. Cal Katarn gets the edge as a force user. Now we compare armament and tools. Cal Katarn built his lightsaber after his victory over Jarek when he joined the new Jedi Order. It has a long hilted design with hand grips on the upper and lower parts, signifying alternate hand placement use. Very versatile, the perfect weapon for a Jedi Battlemaster. His weapon utilizes a single blue Adagan crystal as the focusing lens. For a great deal of his career, Kyle also carried a Briar pistol with him, given to him by his father. However, he appears to have abandoned its use not long after he defeated Dasan. Sin Drolog's lightsaber featured a slightly simpler design, but an elegant one nonetheless. Drolog's lightsaber featured an almost identical design to Jedi Master Kit Fisto's. I would tell you why, but let's see if you guys know. I'll be impressed if you do. It utilized a single green Adagan crystal as the focusing lens. Now, I am aware that there are some images of Drolog wielding a blue lightsaber, but this has been confirmed as another lightsaber color continuity mistake. Overall, I honestly have have to say that in terms of weapons, neither Drolig or Katarn have a definitive edge over one another. With that said, I declare them equal in terms of armament. Now, before we get to the verdict, I will give my brief opinion on Syndralic's battle with Vader as there are many different interpretations of the battle through all three versions of Revenge of the Sith. In the film, we only see a brief scene in which Drolg and his students attempt to fight off Vader in the hologram being watched by Kenobi. In this scene, Drolg's students appear to be cut down immediately while he lasts a little longer. After that, there is a cut and we don't see his actual death. In the novel, a slightly different scenario takes place. Drolg is shown getting his students to safety before attempting to fight Vader by himself. He fights well, but Vader's overwhelming force powers allow him to create an opening and slash him through the shoulder, killing him. His body along with his students are found by Yoda and Obi-Wan. In the video game, possibly the most radical version of this fight takes place. After cutting his way through a squad of clones, Drolig fights Vader after he kills his favorite student, Sarah. 
In this battle, Drog appears to be almost a match for Vader in terms of dueling and was only beaten when Vader resorted to his force powers, allowing him to stab Drog through the stomach. Now, as we all know, Star Wars video games exaggerate events and powers all the time, but it does paint an interesting picture. In my opinion, this is what happened. Drolig was trying to get his students to safety when Vader entered. Drolig was able to hold off Vader for a brief moment, but was not able to stand against the Sith's mastery of the Force. So overall, a bit of a combination of the novel and the game. So overall, Drolig was a bit of a challenge for Vader, but nothing he couldn't deal with, especially considering the setting. With that out of the way, let's get to the verdict. As it stands, both combatants are extremely proficient duelists, and undoubtedly among the best of their respected eras, but in the end, I would have to say Kyle Katarn would win. The reason for this really comes down to versatility. Kyle Katarn has a much wider range of force abilities at his disposal, and while he may not know as many lightsaber styles, the ones he does have he has taken to the absolute nth degree. Syndralic, by contrast, is a one-trick pony. He focuses entirely on a wide range of lightsaber styles. This means Drog's force abilities are average at best. If the two of them actually fought, I believe it would proceed like this. It would begin with the two of them engaging in a fierce lightsaber duel as they are both primarily swordsmen. And although Drog's dueling-centric style would allow him to keep Kyle busy, it would do little more than buy him time in the end. And once Kyle resorted to his force abilities, Syndralic would be completely overwhelmed. I declare Jedi Battlemaster Kyle Katarn the winner. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that Versus series. Please leave suggestions in the comment section. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Alright, so who should I use next? Hey Jaden, you wanna be in the next Versus series? Sure. Can I fight someone from the Old Republic? Okay, who? Surprise me. Alright.